how we started staying up. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put that in the B-roll. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. It's Jasmine, Paul. So what's going on, everybody? I'm Russell Lewis. Um, I'm excited to be here practicing what we preach. Yeah, so we started Practice What You Preach after a conversation that we had, and it was simply to bring people closer to God mm -hmm. and show them that, especially in today's society, that it is okay to know and love God. Absolutely. So this is our very first episode. So Jasmine, kick us off. Today, we're going to talk about communication and friendships. This last couple of weeks has been so vital with communication you know the world has now gone digital and everybody's online and so it, it's so important now more than ever that we are communicating who we are communicating like what we need the support that we need whatever it is um and so i think it's just it's gonna be a good topic communication is so vital especially in times like this because we're distancing ourselves from the world Mm, so yeah. I would encourage people to reach out in a genuine manner. When yeah. you call people say, hey, how are you? Don't just be calling to, to, to borrow something or talk <laughs> about nonsense, but really focus on uh, your friends and ensuring that they're doing okay. But also do it for you because you got to maintain a great sense of mental health during this tough time. And I think it even goes a little further with that communication because I think now more than ever, I think we've gotten into a place everything's on social media and it's like you can't really get away so i think now more than ever we need to be communicating what exactly we need because people aren't going to know like for me i'm in my house majority of the time so unless i share with you know my family or my friends hey i need x y and z like for example i didn't have masks like i didn't have i was waiting for my, I, I didn't have any protective gear so Russ, I was like putting a scarf around my face because yeah. I didn't have it. <laughs> and so I communicated like, hey, I don't have it. And my grandmother is a seamstress. And so she knit me a few, or not knit, but she um, sewed a few masks together with some filters. My dad shipped me some from um, South Korea. And so, but again, people don't know how to help you until you ask for help. We can go ahead and start with James 119. And it says... My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen mm. and slow to become angry. Mm. Mm. So, so we talk a lot in terms of leadership, right? Yeah. When it comes to communicating, it is so important to listen. Yeah. But what you will see a lot of times is the opposite. Uh, John Maxwell says that 90, the best leaders listen 98% of the time and talk only 2%. Mm. However, a lot of people, they flip that. Yeah. And they talk 98% of the time and they only listen to their people 2% of the time. Have you ever experienced this? Absolutely. In every capacity, professionally, personally, me, <laughs> like myself. Um, so I can't, you know, I'm not perfect. And it, it bothers, it not, not bothers me, but it, it's like, man, because there's so many great ideas. There's so many unique things. Like God created every person on this earth. He created every single person. Like he broke the mold every time he created someone new. And the fact that we don't extrapolate those ideas, you know, those innovation, that, that, that innovative thinking from other people, yeah. that's, we're, we're knocking ourselves to think that we know everything. Absolutely. We're not. I agree 100%. And we also... I feel like we devalue not only what God is doing or has done, but we also devalue each other when we don't listen to each other. Absolutely. Or we only listen to respond and not to understand. And, you know, going back to communication, for us, we learned in our different um, professional military education about the listener and the receiver. If you're listening, you're listening. And then if you, you know, and receiving what's going on, you're not just listening for the, the, those key points. And I think that flows right into Proverbs 18, 13. To answer before listening, mm. that is folly and shame. Because a lot of people, they already got it figured out. So they, they have already, you're midway through making your point. They have already cut you off and stopped listening to you. So we are doing each other a disservice when we do that. I love how this is like tying into friendship. Um, I have a group of 
um, women entrepreneurs that I fellowship with every week. And we talked about sometimes we're so quick to respond to people, especially friends, that we don't allow room for the Holy Spirit. Like we already know, well, girl, you should do X, Y, and Z instead of listening and just being like, okay, maybe I just need to pray for you. Maybe I don't need to give a response because sometimes that response could hinder that person because they're looking to you for guidance. They're looking to you as the expert when we really should be turning the direction back to God and turning, you know, turning it back to him because he's the only one that can lead us and guide us. The Holy Spirit came after Jesus died on the cross to comfort us and to lead us and guide us into all truth. So if we're constantly, you know, speaking like and not allowing that time to listen and meditate, then who, who are we speaking from? Are we speaking from ourselves? Or are we speaking from God? And I will tell you that I have struggled in my marriage in terms of listening, because a lot of times when people come to you, i.e. my wife, she would come to me to vent, and I would think that I had to offer a solution. But she didn't mm -hmm. need a solution. She just needed somebody to listen to her. And I failed up until the point where she was like, babe, I know you're smart, but you don't have to figure everything out. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. It was like, oh, well, baby, what do you need me to do? I yeah. just need you to listen. But I love that, how you guys capture that. And that, I feel like that's quality communication. She's at, she's telling you what she needs. And then and you're also reciprocating her need by supporting her in what she needs and in doing what she she's asking you. And I think that's huge in communication, relationships, friendships, like, People need you to speak up and share, okay, this is how you support me, but also people need to receive that and listen. And like, for example, I love snail mail. I love snail mail, Russ. Like letters, handwritten letters are amazing. So when I deployed, I gave people a card of like the things I wanted. Like I was very clear. I, I communicated, don't send me anything else. <laughs> like don't send me outside of this. I want this i was very clear i put like i wanted like archie comic books and handwritten letters and um trader joe snacks and i laid out the snacks like you want to give me something give me what i'm asking for right <laughs> and people were like oh my god this helped me so much like this this was really what i needed but when i didn't get the stuff that i didn't want i was thankful i was grateful you know because this person clearly took the time to ship something you know they took the time and and mailed it. i was grateful but it was something special you know from my squadron to get a box of archie comic books they had all of the children in our squadron write me handwritten letters they i wanted photos um so they they had like their halloween party all the different events that i was not there for they had photos of that i mean everything that i listed on there they 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 gave me and it was just like man that means something when you go the extra mile to not only listen, but care for that person's needs. It does wonders for that person's mental health, but also that you care about me. Like you legit care because you, you went that extra mile. So you said something and I'm going to switch gears a little bit, mm -mm. <laughs> just a little bit, because it kind of wasn't in our pre recording or our pre conversation. Yeah. So you were very clear about what you wanted, mm. right? Yeah. I will tell you that in my lifetime, I have asked God for X, Y, and Z, but mm. I have oftentimes limited myself mm. by not asking for certain things. You have to be, number one, very direct with God in the same manner, but also what are you not asking God mm. for? And he might have something huge in store for you, but what if you are limiting your prayers to God? That's real. Look, I'm speechless. <laughs> and and that's something we can come back uh, next week on and talk about. But I definitely want to that's drive real. that thought. So take us through some of the scriptures you have on friendship. John 15, verse 13. And it reads, no one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Um, so, of course, that's talking about Jesus and laying down his life for his friends, which we all are. And so 
I just appreciated, um, I'm reading this book called Waiting and Dating by Miles Monroe, and he really talks about the foundation of friendship. And it, it's helped me in kind of readdressing how I look at my friendships and the people that are in my life right now and in the people that have been in my life in the past. Um, but he talks about, he makes three points. He says that Jesus's casual friends were interested in his interests. His close friends were committed to his goals and his intimate friends were after his heart. And I was just like, wow, the casual friends were the ones like his, the people that just followed Jesus all over, like, just like, boom, Jesus, like, citing, oh, what's he doing? Like, kind of like your followers, like, they, they like what you're doing, it's cool, like, they, they, they promote it, but then you have, like, your close friends who are, like, committed to that, those goals in your life. So if you're trying to lose weight or, you know, you're trying to save some money, they're the ones that, you know, how are you doing with the diet? You know, you still working out? What's going on? Um, just kind of keeping you accountable in that light. But then his intimate friends were the close friends, the ones that were asking about his character and asking about, is this aligning with the vision and the plan that God had for you, has for you? I feel like sometimes we rush people into the intimate part of our lives friendships, relationships, whatever, but we don't have that, you know, that foundation of there, there are just people that are just here to support you and yeah, you do it well, cool, but then not everybody can be in that space with you because I mean, Jesus really, he had 12 and kind of 11. So, you know, he had that, his core that they rolled with him, they rocked with him, they, they went through some things together. I mean, Peter walking on water and I mean, they were praying, demons off of people and you know what I mean but that was like a really close intimate space and so um what I gathered from that was sometimes we need to remove the cloudiness and the noise and really get back to ultimately communing with the greatest friend of all which is Jesus. I love the way you broke that down especially now more, now more than ever we have to be able to understand God's word Mm. and be able to interpret it for ourselves. And when you bring up things like social media, it will resonate in a deeper sense because yeah, you're going to have those followers and they're great, but you have to have that circle of people that you keep around you that know those dark places within you. Mm. They know your inner thoughts and how that can be devastating to you. Mm -hmm. but, and they know how to step in and how yeah. to speak to your soul. It's very important to understand and be able to differentiate between those friends because you may think that you have a friend who fits in a certain box, but over time, as we all know, friends kind of sway yeah, and absolutely. they go up and down and kind of all over the place, but it's okay. And it, it's season. Like there are friends that, that are for different seasons and I'm sure Russ, you probably can relate. I, I know for me as a single person, I can relate to my friends that I had when I was single and now that they're married, it's a different season and, and that's okay. It's, a little bit uncomfortable but I think if you are open about it and what you know because there's this like I have a best friend we used to talk every day every day and now that she's married with children like that's not possible <laughs> but that's okay because I re we recognize okay there's a difference in the relationship it doesn't mean that I love you any less. It just means that now our time together is more meaningful because now we only have a short window to really fit in what we, like we hit the key points and we, we're very intentional about praying for each other. We hit the key points and we, every conversation we have, we always leave off with prayer. We, we don't play about that. And so it, I feel like it's even more meaningful because we're so much more intentional with our time together. It was very hard explaining to some of my best friends, hey man, no, I can't go out to a club. Or hey man, right. there are certain people that cannot be around me because they represent a certain thing mm. that I don't aspire to be anymore. And I will tell you that your real friends, they will understand that. You know, I remember I was a little hurt as a single person, like I want my friend. But it was also like, I recognized like they, they have to move differently. Now that you're united as one, you can't go off and be doing all these different things because that, that unit is the bond that God ordained. And so if you're trying to disrupt that, that's a problem. And so I'm, I'm grateful that my friends are now married. We have a very unique relationship and it's different, but it also, I think it's helped me 
to not be so dependent on them and not be so dependent on the friendship. Now I'm like sitting at home. It's cool. Like I could go to the movies by myself and it's not a problem because I really enjoy this time by myself because I'm not so dependent on my friends and, you know, other people. One thing I need from my friends is to check in every now and then because Mm. it's hard for me to balance a lot of things running around with my kids when I'm at the job site, when I'm doing higher level leadership stuff, when I'm doing practice what you preach. It's not that I forget. It's just I'm so focused on X, Y, and Z that I might forget to send that text message or make a phone call. So please don't hold it against me. I love you, but I am just grinding. That's good. And I think that goes back to, you know, communicating and just saying, hey, like, what's up? And I think from the flip side, I think that sometimes we get into a space where it's like, we don't want to bother you because we know you got all this stuff going on. So we don't want to interrupt. We don't want to disrupt what's going on. And so we, I, at least for my friends, I love them just the same, but it's also like, I don't want to, you know, I get it. Yeah. Like you have a whole family, you got kids, like you have a job. I mean, you have all this stuff going on. So you don't want to also intrude or, and so I think that's just, it. that's good communication, just communicating. Okay. Cause like my one friend, she, um, I love her to death. I, I love her and her husband. They're amazing. She was like, girl, I've been trying to call you all this time. And I was like, really? I haven't received any phone call from you. She had the wrong number. I just figured you have three children and a husband and y'all both getting y'all doc like uh, doctor degrees, like and you both work full time. Like I recognize, I get it. Like y'all are grinding, but she was like, but I still love you still my girl. And so it was, I was like, okay, so I'm going to do better at checking in. You being my single friend, I understand you might not want to intrude, but there's nothing wrong with you sending me a text message mm. or sending me a message on messenger because I can control that response. Mm. When, it, when I get time, right? So if yeah. I'm running around with my head cut off trying to change a dirty diaper, when I yeah. look at my phone, oh, okay, I can hit you right back. So, right. but either way, I really do feel like communication goes both ways. So I don't want to, I, I don't want it to sound like I'm putting all that onus on my single friends. Yeah. Just because I'm married with children. Because that's not the case because I got to do better also. So, okay. So with communication and friendships, how do you differentiate your casual friends, your close friends, and your intimate friends? So I would say two things, uh, time and commitment. Those who are willing to dedicate their time, effort, and energy to you in a deep sense, like those you can call at three o'clock in the morning and you know, hey, I'm on my way. No matter where I am, I'm on my way. Mm. That shows a level of commitment within your friendship. There are certain friends that I can call and no matter where on earth they are, they are going to make an effort to get to where I am to help me, no matter what I need. That's good. So that's how I differentiate it is time and commitment. I love that. Yeah. And that's what, that's what Jesus did. He spent a lot of time with his disciples it, and it was commitment because he told them, um, I can make you fishers of men. And so he like they had to turn away from their lifestyles what they knew and follow him and so not to say that people need to turn away from their lifestyles and follow us but there was a level of sacrifice and commitment and time that took for them to cultivate this bond that not just was a bond for them but it was a bond for the world and so now we see the importance of communing with each other we see the importance of fellowshipping eating breaking bread um, understanding where people are. And so I, I think that's, that's good time and commitment. That's real. And cause sometimes we want to rush through that. Like we want to get to like the end, like the good part, but you got to go through some things. Yeah. Like and those, all of those people I just named, they have been with me, even some of my older mentors, like uh, Lieutenant Colonel Tim Henderson, the guy I talked about on your podcast, hmm. they have been with me in some of my roughest most vulnerable times so they know some of my dark places like mm -hmm. yeah they know me and they understand and I feel like that also drives that commitment because it builds upon that relationship or that friendship everybody that. doesn't deserve that though you gotta earn that absolutely you gotta, earn, you gotta <laughs> earn that but no you're right not everybody deserves that and I think we we just have to be mindful 
because I think there is, um, Brene Brown talked about um, in one of her books, she talked about as a leader being transparent and communicating, but she said, it's not to communicate your business and not to be overtly transparent, but it's to communicate that you share, like, let's say there was like a crisis, you share in the crisis, but sometimes we overshare thinking yeah. that it's like going to build trust, yeah. but trust takes time yeah. and it doesn't necessarily mean I'm over like, so I know for me, I had to work on not oversharing because I just felt like, oh, you know, I should just be transparent. And it's like, wait, you can't be transparent with everybody. Everybody not for you. <laughs> everybody doesn't have your best interests at heart. Yeah. And I will tell you that goes to a few things with me. Right. So I think about perception. Everybody has not earned the right to know the real me. Mm. And I'm very cautious of how I am perceived because mm -hmm. that'll drive the way people treat me. True. Because True. if I'm reserved or I am very intentional about the way I go throughout my day, that forces people to be very intentional with the way they approach me. I've had people approach me in a way that was disrespectful. Mm. And if you are very intentional in the way that you carry yourself and the way that you go throughout your day, that forces people to think before they approach you. Mm -hmm. It forces people to uh, value your time just as much as they value their own. Yeah. So yeah, it, it makes a big difference. And I love that you said it forces people to treat you differently. And I think that as Christians, there is a certain standard we should be living our life. Like, I cannot tell you how many times people say, oh, I, they'll, they'll curse and be like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Like, oh, I apologize, my French. I never said anything about not cursing or being inappropriate. I never said anything. But again, I don't use certain things. I don't use certain uh, grammar or verbiage in my language. And so there's no need for it for me. And so people, I think they get checked by their own self. Maybe there's the Holy Spirit like nudging them like, there should be a certain way that people approach us because of the standard that God has given us to live by. And so you can't come, you know, come at me a certain way because it's just, it's not acceptable. Like I don't, if I'm treating you a certain way, why would you then, you know, treat me out less than that? I also want people to understand if you are living a life of faith, you will be constantly under a microscope. Mm. You will be sometimes scrutinized. Mm. I want you to realize like that is okay. Yeah. Because we're not always going to get it right. Mm -mm. We are not perfect. No, not at all. At all. And I'm not going to lie. Like there are some things that I want to say on Facebook and there are some things I want to say on Instagram and I don't say it because I'm like, I recognize that people are always watching what you're doing and what you're saying. And, and it's not to say that I don't say some off the wall stuff. Cause I do, I'm human and God made me as quirky and loony as I am. But I think we do have to be mindful about that perception, right? Being mindful about what we put out there. Um, and <laughs> if we put out there something, don't be surprised of the nonsense that you get. <laughs> yeah, and I will go so far as to say that we always look up at communication in the way that we are either talking or listening. But how are you communicating your life by the mm -hmm. way that you're living? I think that drives an even deeper sense of life and discovery of yourself Absolutely. in some ways. No, I agree. Um, and it's a, it's a daily walk. Like, it's not a... <laughs> oh, I made it. Like you make it when you get to heaven. So it's a daily walk. Like in, for me personally, like it is a daily dying to myself, dying to my thoughts, dying to my things that I think the world should be and how I think Jasmine's world should look like and really constantly going back to the Lord and say, okay, God, I surrender this day to you. I surrender what I thought was supposed to be my plan or my goals. Like, God, I'm giving this to you because it is, it's a marathon. It is not a sprint uh, by any means. And so don't get it twisted. Like I, for me personally, I have not arrived. I, I will arrive when I'm at the pearly gates and God says, welcome in, you know, well done, my good and faithful servant. Like, that is when I have arrived. So every day is a constant journey. Every day is a constant, like, okay, God, I'm trusting you in this walk. And I don't get it right. And I think we have to be 
okay with not getting it right sometimes and not being so hard on ourselves about it. We are very tough on ourselves with that self-talk. So we'll talk to our friends and say, oh, it'll be fine. It'll be okay. And we'll give the best advice. We won't take our own advice and we won't talk to ourselves like the, we love ourselves. Mm, that's real. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. And yes. so if you love your neighbor as yourself, that means you first got to love you and care for you and care about you because there's no way you should not be giving a better love to somebody else than you are to yourself like it doesn't work like that and i'll go even deeper right <laughs> i'll say that if god is within us we have to love ourselves very deeply because that shows the compassion that we have for god mm, that's good. that is good i like it that was good <laughs> I think we can I think we can close the book right. on this thing now like All right so guys practice what you preach. We talked today about the importance of communication and how communication aligns in our friendships and our relationships um, but also how our communication aligns with ourselves. We talked about that we have to be loving towards ourselves but also loving towards our neighbor. Um, and that when we communicate it's not always about what we have to say but sometimes we really need to take a step back and just listen and not listen to speak, but just listen to understand um, and truly understand. And sometimes when people come to you with problems, it might not be the best advice to give them advice. It might be best just to pray for them. Um, so I'm Jasmine, your co-host. And I'm Russell Lewis. And I just want to let you all know that we love you. We care about you. And we cannot wait until next week to spend some more time with you. But between that time, Practice what you preach.